we are going to stand and see our people after catering for the interests of America and making them powerful. Then our people come back in Uganda, stay in poverty. They can be enticed by other forces to be in criminality and that kind of thing. So my main appeal now is that we are taking this head on. I want the government of Uganda, since we are already in touch with the government of Uganda, to work with us. We are going to use both diplomatic means and other means to recover this money that our people were underpaid. And we want to do this without fear or favor. And I want all those people who worked in either in Afghanistan, under this arrangement in Iraq, or Somalia, please register with these associations. Ora is already with us. We are also going to contact other associations. We were with the SRA the other day. Even today I'm going to have a meeting with them. What I want them to do is to work together. Because once they are together, we can put up a good voice so that we have a bargaining power that will recover all the monies that our people are demanding. If this money comes back in this economy, Uganda will never be the same. This is a lot of money. So we are not going to romance mm -hmm. with anybody. We want that money to come in our economy. Our people went, sacrificed, uh, defended the interest of America. We must, we must bring that money in our economy. Say the truth. All of us went to work in Iraq. Right from Uganda. Whoever had the senses left because he didn't have the money. Wanted to go and work money and improve on his life and his standard of living. But what happened right from here? You could see this was a sophisticated survival. Ugandans who were taken there. For example, when it was a summer season and the temperature is 70 degrees Celsius, you would find the Ugandan under a shed standing with the body armor weighing at least 15 kilograms, the helmet 2 kilograms, the weapon 5 kilograms, Magazine. magazines 7 of them, water bottles 3. And other things. The with the magazine. But the person would be on a post and they would not want you to, 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 to turn on and maybe take on a, a, a shade. They would not want you to change your position, that you have to stand a post professional. And with that heat, this is how you and some of us. Meet an example. Because of the moment I came out there, I used to Uganda. My first child did not have complete organs. I could not find myself, I was not myself. I was not the one left. Because of the environment that I worked in. This environment was highly intoxicated. An American who would go and work there, before he goes back to his country, he would be taken to military hospital in, Fra in German called Frankfurt. The best in the world. America would pay over $600,000 on one individual for medical screening and management of whatever illness or whatever complications this person has. Ugandans, we are given a chance to also go there in Greece, in Cyprus, in European countries for the same before coming back to Uganda. It was never done. That's why even now, Ugandans are suffering with the different complications that they contracted overseas. And all of this, if the, if the Ugandans were paid enough salary, they would have handled their medical issues here, they would have attended to their health issues, but unfortunately, they were being paid little money. And finally, this little money was paid when everybody was aware here. It is not that it was done under trees or under tables. 
whenever you rise up and challenge them, you would be intimidated by Uganda here. And why am I saying this? Is what I have gone through and my colleagues. Even as we are here, some people are going to call Dr. Gideon, come and we pay you some little money. Then you stop this. Why? Because this was bilateral. It was symbiotic. The, ex the extortion, the fraud, this illicit method of, of whatever these people practiced was symbiotic. It was both there and here. Now, why do you think all these people are here? They have a lot of things to do. But it's because they are concerned of what they lost. You work in Iraq, expecting to get a GS scale, whereby every month a GS store would give a foreign national security specialist 7,700 in 2007, 2005, 2006. But the Ugandan was signing $600. In the end, a Ugandan who went there to improve on his life and health instead found himself in worse, more conditions than he left Uganda. It is on this background that we address strongly the United States government in broad daylight under the power of these officers that we need to regain, we need to recover. We need to be paid, we need to be compensated all that we lost under such illegal method of work that these people meted on us. And finally, finally, I will ask the companies that were conniving with those people to stay apart. But now we are the owners of this. We are the people who lost this, he lost in this. And since we have started this war of following what we lost, we should be the sole people involved in this, with the officers of external labor power house that we have given powers to execute the mandate on our behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, there is nobody who is going to call you and put you aside and deal with you on affairs dealing with what we have signed uh, today. It should be the officers concerned with what we have signed today and on the side of ORA, this should be overseas Bhutanese Association leadership, which will call meetings that will address all what we shall be going through to you gentlemen and ladies, so that until we finish the war we have started today, everybody at the end will be happy and will appreciate for the sweat and input. And all the I forgot this. In why do you think of all countries around it were the Ugandans who were chosen? There was an agreement signed between the head. I talked of it. There was an agreement. That was signed between President Museveni and President Bush in 2003 November. If you, are, you have your colleagues there, you can even get that agreement. So it's a public document. And after which that agreement was signed, then in 2005 March, Uganda is the first batch of 25 who are destined there. And that agreement was according Uganda to be deployed there a title. And this is the title of foreign. National security specialists. And unfortunately, today, all the contracts Ugandans have, they are guards. There is no salary scale of a guard in the United States salary scale. It's not there. If the Marines who leave the equivalent of all level and join the army, their scale they start with is GS8. And today, it's about $4,600. That time it was around $3,600. But me, my colleagues, nobody bought even that money. Yet he had GS12, GS13. So this was simple fraud. So this one tells you that Uganda mandated us to go back, I mean to go to Iraq and serve there, and Afghanistan and Somalia. It is our mother country. 
It is our parent country here. It knew everything that we were going through there. Unfortunately, that's what I normally say. I said that all of us there we were orphans. We did not have anybody. I was working with a South African. He was getting fifteen thousand dollars doing the same job I'm doing. He was working with Peruvians. We are getting thirty thousand dollars. He was getting five hundred dollars in the front daylight. And these people even would say Uganda is no good English. Me, no English, but getting no money. These are the Filipinos. Philippi yeah. You can't imagine. You can't come at us. You can speak good English. Me, no English. Me, good money. And you would just feel incest. You're working with someone who cannot even express himself in English. He's getting three times. Ten times. Three thousand dollars. You are getting five hundred dollars. And you are the leader. The other one is even standing in post. Is a, a guard in their towns. So, in conclusion, in conclusion, whatever we suffered, whatever we expressed out there, it was not hidden. It was not done under tables. It was in broad daylight. And I'm sure our president will be, since he's going to be involved, he's going to be witnessing what I'm saying today. He's saying an agreement that allows Ugandans to be deployed overseas. Bush signed an agreement to allow Ugandans to be employed by the Department of Defense. Department of Defense released letters. Ideally, we are not employers, employees of SOC or Triple Canopy. We were employees of the Department of State of the United States. Yeah. It was the one with the power yeah. to release the rate of authorization, which was the instrument of our employment. So, whatever was done, we ask you to see the government to come in broad daylight and to find such uh, actions. Otherwise, we shall not settle unless we cover what was done.